In the south-facing window of Henry Longfellow's study, there stands an elegant three-foot-tall bronze crane. Henry's son, Charlie Longfellow, acquired the crane in Osaka, Japan, during a buying spree in early 1872. In a letter home to his sister, he misidentified the bird as a stork. There is nothing left to do but go curio hunting, for which this is a capital place, but that is very expensive work. I have come across some very nice bronze shops and couldn't resist the temptation, and am now the happy owner of a small flock of bronze storks from five inches to three feet high. They are very nice to have in the garden, you know. These purchases were characteristic of Charlie's collecting habits, largely bronzes and probably made for local customers based on the Buddhist symbolism of the crane. The finely depicted texture of the feathers shows the quality of the piece. The feathers almost conceal a surprise. A section lifts off to reveal a compartment intended for burning incense to lightly perfume a kimono draped over the bird's head. At least one of the sculptures found a home in Cambridge, where an 1877 account of the poet's study notes, an orange tree stands in the window, and near it an Egyptian stork keeps watch. Ten years later, another visitor commented on the orange trees, guarded by a bronze stork. Over the years, Charlie's flock was dispersed. Four Japanese bronze storks appear in the 1893 appraisal of his estate, destined for relations in Portland, Maine. This crane, or its twin, appears in several late 19th and early 20th century photographs by Charlie's cousin, Mary King Longfellow, probably residing in her family's home at 27 South Street in Portland. Mary's bequests return this crane, still seen as a stork by the family, along with a now-departed mate to Cambridge via Harry Dana the last descendant to live in the Longfellow's Brattle Street mansion. <laughs>